I agree. Funyuns are better. Everything. <laughs> not better than composites. Wait, is a Funyun a composite? No, I don't think so. There's not multi-material. What? What, pot what potato chip? I don't know. Maybe a normal onion ring. Yeah, breaded. Maybe. Real question. I don't know. Hard to say. Someone got a question? No. Okay. Well, here's your announcements for the class. There are none. Uh, I'm going to probably post a new homework. I wanted to do it this weekend, but I just got bogged down. So um, let's uh, say I'll post a new homework soon. It's going to be on. Someone, someone saying something? Okay, I gotta mute everybody. Is someone unmuted? No, you guys are all good. Okay. Uh, no homework. Probably gonna post one. I'm, I'm gonna try to get one posted tonight. Okay. So look for that. Um, let's continue where we left off. Uh, we were talking about failure theories. Uh, so last time. Uh, last time we dove in on um, one of the theories, which was longitudinal tension. And the picture you want to have in your head, um, more or less, is something like this, where you've got some like unidirectional composite, kind of all the fibers like running in this direction. Okay, so we have our typical one, two, three coordinate system. And we're pulling in the one direction. So some sort of like stress in the one direction and we're failing in this particular fashion. So two failure, rawr. All right, and we said that, um, biggest sort of takeaway we had from the beginning is strength is not the strength of the composite equal to strength of the fibers. We're using F. Let's use F. Strength of the fibers in the one direction in tension, volume fraction of fibers, plus strength of the matrix in tension, volume fraction of the matrix. This is not true, all right? And that's because we have different strain to failures of each component. All right, so we have to sort of examine the two different cases. One where the matrix has a lower strain to failure, and one where the fibers have a lower strain to failure in this one direction. So that's kind of where we sort of left off. And we sort of broke this down into two cases, and we called case number one. We said it's the situation where the matrix have a higher strain to failure than the fibers. So the strain of the matrix tension to failure is greater than the strain fiber in the one direction tensile failure. Okay, so fiber is more brittle. In this particular case, we broke down even further into two cases, a case of low volume fraction and high volume fraction. So for high volume fraction, we saw in this case that the fibers will fail and the matrix cannot hold. Okay, and we said in that particular situation that the strength here, the strength of the composite in the one direction in tension is whatever the strength of the fiber in the one direction in tension is multiplied by the volume fraction of the fibers plus this kind of weird term that we saw, the strength of the matrix in tension at the point of fiber failure, we call this FMT prime, times volume fraction of the matrix. Okay, so this was sort of one of our cases that we had, 
where we define this FMT prime term. This is the amount of stress that's in the matrix right before this thing has failed. So this here is the strain to failure of the fibers in the one direction and tension multiplied by the modulus of the matrix. And we sort of showed that and demoed that why it's this particular value sort of in last lecture. All right, so that was one particular case. In another case we had, the fibers fail, but matrix can hold. All right, and in that situation, the strength of the material is just going to be whatever the strength of the matrix is multiplied by the volume fraction of the matrix. So here, this is what we saw. So the question that we had in the chat last time was, at what volume fraction does we do we make this flip? Okay. And this will sort of start on new material. So at what VF does this occur? I have a question in the chat. All right, at what volume fraction does this occur? Well, the way that we're going to attack this is we're going to set these two equations more or less equal to each other and determine what volume fraction would cause it to go one way or the other. Right. <clears throat> so, with no fibers, the failure of the composite intention better be equal to the failure strength of the matrix, obviously. With 100% fibers, the failure of the composite intention better be the failure strength of the fibers in the one direction intention. You would hope that to be true. All right? So, what is the crit? That's kind of what we're looking for. This critical volume fraction that sort of, um, sorry, I think in the notes I write it this way, VF crit. I think that's sort of how I write it in the notes. I think it's a little bit easier to understand that way. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's sort of graph what these two uh, failure theories tell us as a function of volume fraction. So we're going to graph those two guys on the same graph as a function of volume fraction. So we'll plot failure of the composite in the one direction, in tension, as a function of volume fraction VF. Okay. So we're going to have two lines here, one for each of these equations. And we're going to see kind of when we just graph this, we'll sort of naturally flesh out sort of what's going on here. So here we are, this is our volume fraction, VF. And on this x-axis here, we're going to have the failure of the composite in the one direction in tension, F1T. So let's start with our low volume fraction. We know this equation looks something like F1T is equal to volume fraction of the matrix times the failure of the matrix in tension. <clears throat> so we're plotting this as a function of volume fraction. So you might want to rewrite this as F1T is equal to 1 minus Vf times Fmt. So if we're going to plot this, we see that if Vf is equal to 0, 
that we're going to have some value here that will be like failure of the matrix intention. All right, pretty obvious to understand that, that if this VF is equal to zero, then we just have equal to the failure of the matrix intention, which we would expect. As we approach one, the failure of the composite will approach zero, failure strength. That's what this equation generally tells us. So our first equation that we have here is this line that runs sort of here. I'm just gonna draw it in sort of this dashed manner for now. And so this is our F1T equals VM FMT failure line. For high VF, <clears throat> we know that we have the failure in the one direction of tension is equal to volume fraction of the matrix times this strange term VMT prime plus VF times failure of the fiber in the one direction of tension. All right, we would think about this kind of on the far right hand side first. If our volume fraction of the fibers is one, then more or less this term goes to zero. And we'll be left with just the failure of the fibers in the one direction in tension, which generally will be a, a very large value, something like up here. Um, failure of the fiber in the one direction in tension. And you could kind of go through the, the whole plot yourself um, to sort of graph this line, but it's actually going to look a little bit strange, um, where if you have just uh, matrix material, then you're going to end up with this like FMT prime value, which is down here. Lower than the actual failure strength of the matrix. And so this is actually a linear line as well. And kind of comes down like this and meets at that point there. Where these two guys intersect here, that's your critical volume fraction. Okay. So we can uh, sort of calculate that by equating these two lines. So we're just gonna set these equations equal to each other. We'll say something like the failure, the fibers, one direction of tension by V of grit plus failure of the matrix of tension prime, this sort of stress in the matrix when the fibers fail, multiplied by the volume fraction of the matrix equal to volume fraction of the matrix. Let's call it crit because this is a critical value times the failure of the matrix of tension. This is sort of what we're equating. All right, we can make the substitution here, assuming that it's only matrix and fibers, like one minus VF crit. times the failure strength of the matrix in tension. And you can solve. And you'll end up here with a critical volume fraction, which looks something like this. Failure strength of the matrix in tension minus this 
failure of the matrix in tension um, when all the fibers fail. So this is the amount of stress that's in the matrix when the fibers fail. Divided by F of 1T plus failure strength of the matrix in tension minus this strength value. So here's your critical volume fraction where this changeover occurs. Let's remind ourselves what some of these terms are. Stress and matrix. At catastrophic failure. And here it is equal to the strain to failure of the fiber in the one direction and tension multiplied by the modulus of the matrix. As a reminder. Okay. Now, there are some interesting things to be found here now of this particular situation. So here's our sort of value that would give us um, the critical volume fraction. All right. Let's go back up and investigate our graph quickly. Here. So this is sort of, sort of our critical point, this vertical, sort of vertical delineation. To the right here, failure is sort of dominated by the strength of fibers. We'll say fiber dominant. And sort of to the left here is matrix dominant. If it's matrix dominant, this is the line that sort of tells you how much strength that you have. If it's fiber dominant, this is the, the line that sort of defines how strong you are. Okay. It's the big check mark. So this is really the line that's dictating failure. Okay. What's interesting to note here is that if you have pure matrix material, you'll have zero fibers in your in your composite. Okay. In this situation, the strength of the composite is just going to be whatever the strength of the matrix is. Yes? Okay. By adding a small amount of fibers or a small amount of reinforcement, you actually decrease the strength of the piece. Okay, hopefully we see this. Initially, when you start adding fibers, you start adding a small amount, the strength is going down. And that's because kind of the strength of the composite initially is dominated by the matrix material. And as you're incorporating reinforcement, you're not actually adding strength to this point because the strength of the composite is not governed by fibers before that critical volume fraction the strength will still be governed by the strength of the matrix. And so up to this particular critical volume fraction, if you're including reinforcement below that value, you're actually hurting your strength, which is really kind of an interesting finding. All right, it actually takes some amount of material past this critical value to start increasing your strength over the condition where you just have matrix material. It's really kind of an interesting finding. And so you might call this sort of particular value here some 
VF min? I don't know. It would be the minimum amount of fibers you would need to increase the strength over a purely matrix material. It's really kind of an interesting value that comes out of this particular graph. This is minimum. Fiber amount. To increase strength. Over pure. matrix material. That's really kind of an interesting thing. <laughs> Your composite will be stiffer if you add more fiber material. We know that from rule of mixtures but it will not be stronger up to a certain point. It's kind of strange finding. All right. Then obviously beyond this like VF min, the more fibers you add, the stronger it's gonna be because your fibers are now starting to dominate the strength. And even though maybe the matrix is failing a little bit uh, as you go, um, the fibers are really dominating here, All right? So there you go. That's only case number one, dang. God damn, complicated. All right. We still have to cover the other case. And the other case is the situation where the matrix is more brittle than the fibers. So in this situation, we've had the strain to failure of the matrix and tension now is less than the strain to failure of the fibers in the one direction in tension. <clears throat> okay, we have sort of the same idea. Is it here where we will strain in one direction. Until matrix fails. That's different from before when we had sort of straining until the fibers failed because the fibers were more brittle. then the matrix will fail. At a strain of whatever this would be, the strain to failure of the matrix, which we call epsilon MT. MT hopes and dreams. All right, we could sort of graph again what these constituents are doing in this situation. So here, this is like the strain. And here, this might be like the stress. It's in sort of the material. First thing you might want to look at is uh, the fiber. Okay, so again, the fiber. Here you go, very stiff, loading, loading, loading. Okay. Would fail at a failure strain of EF1T. And fails at this failure stress up here, which would be the strength of the fibers in the one direction in tension. And in this, this situation, the matrix is more brittle. So the matrix will be less stiff. That's almost always true. And in this particular situation, we're going to fail earlier than the fibers. So here we have a less stiff material, and maybe your matrix is failing here. So here is your strain to failure of the matrix tension. Your composite's gonna be some combination of both of these and sort of the stiffness is gonna depend on your volume fraction, but we know that it's gonna be somewhere in the middle. 
And we know that the composite will fail at the same strain that the matrix fails. So something like here. So this is your composite. This is going to fail with F1T, the failure of the composite in the one direction and tension. The matrix here fails FM. We also have another critical value that's important. It's a value that we saw before. What is the stress in the fiber when the composite fails? So we can consider that as well. And that's going to be this value here. This is F, F1T prime. All right. So stress in, made, so stress in fibers. When the matrix fails, is this F, F1, T prime? So it's the amount of stress that's in the fibers when the matrix fails. And this is going to be equal to the strain to failure of the matrix in tension multiplied by the modulus of the fibers in the one direction. This is a nice kind of like intermediate result that you're going to need for some calculation. And that is like that guy there. Okay. So right before the composite fails, we're going to have a known stress on the composite. And it's going to be whatever the matrix is holding plus whatever the fibers are holding right before failure. So that's going to be something like the stress in the one direction on the composite is going to be equal to whatever the matrix is holding that's you know just about to fail so the failure strength of the matrix in tension multiplied by the volume fraction of the matrix since this is right before failure it's right at its failure strength plus the amount of five the amount of stress that the fibers are holding so this is f f1 t prime multiplied by the volume fraction of the fibers Okay. Again, this value here is the stress that's in the fibers right as the matrix is failing. That's why we're using this matrix strain to calculate this stress value. It's a little strange to use the matrix strain to calculate the stress in the fibers, but that's because we're interested in the stress of the fibers where the matrix fails. Again, we have two possibilities. Okay, We have a low volume fraction and a high volume fraction possibility. Right? It's the same sort of idea that we had before. At very sort of low volume fractions, let's sort of, we can put this to it. We'll say again, two possibilities. A failure. Okay. At low volume fraction, What happens? Well, regardless of lower or high volume fraction, the matrix is going to fail. So this matrix is going to fail first. And then if the volume fraction of fibers is low, then the load that's transferred from the failing matrix to the fibers is too much for the fibers to handle. There's not enough fibers to hold the load after the matrix fails.
So in that situation, the fibers would also immediately fail. All right. And it would be like this single catastrophic failure again. So in that situation, this composite is going to be whatever the stress was on the composite right before it all catastrophically failed. And that's going to be this strength of the composite is equal to the failure strength of the matrix in tension multiplied by the volume fraction of the matrix plus whatever stress the fibers were holding right before this all catastrophically failed, which is this F, F1, T prime multiplied by volume fraction of the fibers. So that's a low volume fraction condition where the matrix is more brittle than the fiber. You also have a high volume fraction condition. And again, here we'll have the matrix failing first. But in this situation, we have enough fibers inside of the composite where the load that was being held by the matrix can be taken up appropriately by the fibers. Okay. There's enough fibers to like hold on. So what you see is like this composite that like looks very funny. This composite's got all this matrix inside it and all these fibers inside it. And then all of a sudden you're loading, 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 and the matrix fails, but all these fibers are like hanging on between like broken pieces of matrix. So all you see is like crackled matrix, cracked matrix everywhere. And then these like fibers that are strung between the matrix. And you can argue whether or not that's still a usable and viable composite, but you know. It hasn't technically fully failed yet. Okay. So we'll still support tension. Until fibers fail. And in that situation, your failure strength is just the failure strength of the fibers in the one direction of tension multiplied by the volume fraction of the fibers. All right. I have a question. That's everything for longitudinal tensile failure. There's another, um, you could look at where this critical volume fraction occurs. So you could drive this as well. Again, you could set these two equations equal to each other, figure out where this critical volume fraction occurs. And here it's uh, slightly different. Um, and you're going to solve this in the homework. Once I make it. So like I said, it results in this like really interesting case. This is a visualization of high VF with the matrix failure strain less than the failure strength of the fibers in the one direction in tension. Yeah. 
So it's this general idea here that you're like pulling on this guy in the one direction and the matrix is like constantly cracking. You got all these cracks here that are forming inside the matrix, sort of like between the fibers and the fibers are strong enough to hold on. So all these cracks are occurring and they're sort of transferring load to the fibers, but the fibers are like, yeah, whatever, that ain't nothing. Like I can handle it. And so what happens is you get all these cracks inside your composite and yeah, that composite still holds tension, but is that still like a useful material? I don't know. It's uh, debatable, maybe. I certainly wouldn't like to see that if I were designing something, but technically it's still holding tension in the one direction. So I guess it still hasn't failed yet, but I would not want to put that thing back into compression. I tell you that. All right. All right. So I've kind of put together a sort of a summary of all this because there's a lot going on with this longitudinal tension failure. You have like brittle matrix versus more brittle fibers. And then you got two cases for each one of these sort of possibility. It's one for low volume fraction, one for high volume fraction. So if you go to notes and take a look at um, sort of slide 11 in the notes here, I've done my best to sort of summarize as best I can all of this information in one slide for you. So we talked about like case number one, where the fibers are more brittle and you have two situations where you have high volume fraction and where you have low volume fraction. In the case where um, the fiber is more brittle, <clears throat> if you have a high volume fraction, this is going to fail suddenly and catastrophically because the amount of load carried by the fibers cannot be adequately transferred to the matrix when the fibers fail and your failure strength is something that looks like this. If you have low volume fractions for the case where the fiber is less brittle, then the fibers will fail inside that composite, but the matrix can take it up and the matrix will be fine. And the matrix will fail sometime later. Right? So here we are with the summary of this case where the fibers are more brittle. We have a case also where the matrix is more brittle and subsequent sort of paths that you need to go down, whether you're above or below some critical volume fraction. Complicated. Dang, man. Told you, longitudinal tension, complicated. All right, so there you go. You'll have some questions about that. Question, audience. So the question from the audience is, if you have a failure condition that's looking like this picture here, why is it dangerous to put that back into compression? Well, if you have a composite that you've tested in longitudinal tension and you have all these matrix cracks that are happening, so all these kind of guys that are right here, you're quickly losing your ability to transfer load to the fibers so that they can hold compression, right? One of the things that the matrix phase does for us in a composite is it allows load transfer to fibers, specifically in compression. A single glass fiber by itself in compression is going to buckle, okay? It takes the surrounding matrix phase to adequately like elicit the compressive strength of that fiber. Is that clear? So if you've got all these kind of cracks that are occurring inside the matrix, you're getting to a point where this length here between the fibers where it's kind of cracked could be long enough where you could potentially buckle in that region under compression, right? So um, not gonna hold, uh, not gonna hold up very well. All right, let's move on to the next failure type. <clears throat> and the next thing we want to talk about is transverse tensile failure. Luckily, this one's a lot easier. So we talked about failure in the one direction. Now let's talk about what happens when you load a composite in the two or three direction. All right, the picture that you should have in your head, here's again our unidirectional composite with fibers running in this direction. All right. But now we're not loading in the one direction, we're loading in tension in sort of this like two, three direction. This is like sigma two or three, kind of equivalent because we have a plane of isotropy here. You get the general idea. Okay. 
we will assign the transverse tensile failure of the composite to the variable F2T. Here we call capital F2T, failure strength of the composite in the two direction in tension. This is far and away the weakest direction for, for composites, like by almost 100 times. Yeah, you're scared, aren't you? 100 times? Yeah. Depending on the makeup, could be 100 times or more. And I'll give you an example. Here's a carbon fiber epoxy composite. And this comes from page 378 of your book. It lists for a unidirectional carbon fiber epoxy material, F1T, 3,250 MPa. That's what it lists in your book. F2T, failure strength in the two direction in tension, 62 MPa. Yikes town. I've got a nice picture in the notes. This is actually a picture I took myself. And I'll put it here for you. So this is a SEM, scanning electron micrograph of a glass epoxy composite that failed in tension. You can see here kind of these cracks forming between the fibers that are sort of running into and out of the plane, right? So you see those circles there, those are individual glass fibers. When you're loading in this direction, what is dominating? What phenomena? type it in the chat. You can do it. Anyone in the classroom awake? Stress concentration. Okay. You're pulling this thing in tension and it's got all these circular inclusions. Stress concentration. Rawr. Okay. All right. There's more or less two sort of methods that are used to predict the strength in the two direction, either a method dominated by strain concentration or a method dominated by stress concentration, kind of determines what the values are. Um, but um, kind of the prediction here is easy. No strength. uses a stress concentration or strain concentration factor. These are kind of derived computationally, uh, not computationally, they're derived analytically from like your 
hexagonal and uh, square packing models. These ones are specifically derived from square packing models. So I will give you these two stress concentration and strain concentration values. And your strain concentration. We give this a K sub epsilon. The denominator is more complicated, so I'll start there. One minus square root of 4 Vf on pi multiplied by the quantity 1 minus Em on Ef2. Okay, the multiplication here between these two guys. And the numerator, 1. Stress concentration similar? Here we'll use a K sigma. Got the same denominator. Four BF on pi multiplied by one minus EM on EF2. The numerator is a little different. Here we actually have some information. This is one minus VF times one minus EM on EF2. That's your strain concentration and stress concentration values derived from hexagonal, sorry, square packing models. Put these two guys uh, calculated. Strength in the two direction intention is just going to be the strength of the matrix intention divided by this concentration factor. All right, here, K sigma or epsilon. And I'll say K sigma is more commonly used. And generally ranges in value from, let's say, one, two, three ish. Okay. So that was a lot less painful than uh, longitudinal tension, huh? Yeah. You're loading across circular elements, stress concentration, all right? Matrix is gonna crack around those fibers. It's because you have intense amount of stress around those fibers and it's just gonna open up and fail, just like you saw in that picture. Okay, so that's uh, transverse tension. We'll tackle the other three on Wednesday. That's it for today. Thanks.